Coming up on today's show, Fallout 76 details. PUBG sues Fortnite. And the Gfinity Elite Series kicks off this weekend. Welcome to the big leagues. Oh, and by the way, we're, we're at PLE, PLE Computers. Computers. These are the top three things that gamers need to know this week. First and foremost, Fallout 76 has been revealed. And it's not Fallout 74 as people were telling us this morning. Fallout 74? Yeah, our camera guy What's can't count. You, what are you people doing? Not, not counting, apparently. Uh, yeah, so, so yes. Yeah, we haven't seen much. No. But there's lots of rumours out, Pete. Yeah, and you know, for the eagle-eyed viewers of the trailer, there are some things to pick out of it. That's what I love about gamers and developers these days. They put a lot of nice little Easter eggs and teasers in these trailers when they're doing it. And of course, all the people like us sitting at home are like, let's watch that again, eight speed, yep. slow it right down. Okay, what time was that clock? What time was this? What time was that? That's where they get 15 million views from. It's the same five people <laughs> yeah. just watching it over watching and over it again, again. again. But anyway, look, the Pip-Boy date that's in there is 2102. Okay. Game one yep. was set in 2161. Okay. Which means that this is going to be a prequel. And the only other real important thing that we know about it is that it's going to be a survival RPG. Well, rumored. Rumored survival rumored RPG. Allegedly and survival I, RPG. Allegedly a rumored survival RGP. Allegedly. Allegedly, Lebly. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's what we know about Fallout 76, but more details we will bring to you. And of course, E3 is around the corner and Bethesda have said there's going to be a lot more announcements around Fallout 76 at E3. It's always an exciting time for us gamers. E3 is like our Christmas. Yes, it is. So we get to unwrap all these amazing trailers <gasps> and see what comes out. Hey, something that our Epic have just unwrapped yeah. is probably a summons to court from PUBG. <laughs> oh yes, PUBG is suing Fortnite. Whoop de doo! No one cares. No, because no, no, no. Hang on a sec. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I don't no. care. I care. You're no one though. Because, oh, oh, you're no one. No one cares. That's nice. That's funny. Um, no, look. The interesting thing is that uh, PUBG actually uses or licenses the engine that is Fortnite. The Unreal Four engine is is created by Epic. They they the ones who make that. PUBG use that. So you would think maybe it's not the best idea to sue the people whose engine you've built your game on. No, maybe not. Um, the other thing that they're doing is they're suing them for copyright, which is going to be interesting to watch how it plays out because essentially, like the only real thing that the two games have in common, aside from the gameplay and all that sort of stuff, is genre. Battle well, Royale, and you can't sue someone for a genre. It would be like FIFA taking Pro Evo Soccer to court yeah. because they're a soccer game. And what's going to come out of this? Can we no longer have any games with 100 players in them? You no, know, we still have that. But you know what's really interesting is that oh. not only is PUBG built on Unreal Engine 4, right, right. which is made by Epic, um, a lot of the assets from their game are actually bought from the Unreal Store oh, as well. Kidding? So like, oh, literally, and, but the thing is, PUBG has no artistic style. It's generic game, gun game 435. But you look at Fortnite, yeah. there's actually colours in that game. Yeah, there's colours, there's cosmetics, it's very bright and awesome and all that sort of stuff. Look, well, nothing's gonna happen out of this. Oh, no, 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 something will happen. PUBG will get sent straight out of the courtroom <laughs> yeah. and said, never come back again. Yeah. But anyway, that remains to be seen. And uh, loot boxes will go up $4 each because of uh, the legal costs. Uh, final thing that you need to know is that Gfinity, the Elite series, kicks off this weekend, Finally, as yeah. we speak, it's been happening. Welcome to the big leagues. Hey, and uh, speaking of Gfinity, mm. we happen to know some Gfinity casters. Yes, we do. Uh, so you may have seen a couple of them on the Flag Test Weekly patch, which you're watching right now. Uh, Conky, who has appeared to cast CSGO, yep. which is going to be a Gfinity Elite Series game. And also Bizer, who's been casting Rocket League. And he casts CSGO with Conky. He casts so. everything. Um, he's fantastic. They're two of the greatest casters in this country, and you're going to see them at Gfinity Elite Series. There's a lot that's been happening around this. This is a full-on massive production. They've built a, a studio for it in Sydney at Hoyts, who have jumped on board. Yep. Channel 10 and Channel 1 are going to be broadcasting the studio appearances, the full production, everything, and the games live on the weekend as well. It's really cool for esports. It's it, huge it's, for esports. It's e what we've been waiting for, and hopefully it's a way for better things to come for everyone. Yeah, and the other thing, of course, is that there's six teams to follow. There's two teams out of Sydney, 
two teams out of Melbourne, one team out of Brisbane. And for those of us that live here in Perth, there's also Ground Zero Gaming as well. So, you know, it's the first time that we've really had an opportunity to get behind some homegrown talent yeah. and teams and really follow some colours that you want to from your home uh, town and state and stuff like that. So, yeah. Lots of really exciting stuff for Gfinity Elite. By the way, um, next weekend on the Flak Test Weekly Patch, we will give you details about our giveaway for two tickets to go and see the show live. The Gfinity Elite series at the Hoyt Cinema, at the studio, everything. You're going to be a part of it. It's going to be amazing. So make sure you keep watching the Flak Test Weekly TV patch. <laughs> oh man, that was one continuous breath. You got it out though. <clears throat> it's, look, it's because we're in a different scene, Pete. The Flak Test Weekly Patch. Good. TV nice. show. Pete's unsettled because we're somewhere different this week. You might have noticed we're not on the couch. We're actually at PLE Computers down yes. in Osborne Park. We are. And we've got a tour coming up for you just after this. Anthony, you ready? He's not ready. Say yes. Yes. He's ready. Hey guys, we're here at PLE Computers. We've got Anthony. Hi, Anthony. So good How to have you, guys. Thanks Very for letting good. us come down, man. Yes, yes. no problem. No problem. Um, so, mate, at this point in time, right, we're in the Osborne Park store. This is the latest store to join the the whole fleet of stores for PLE Computers around the country. Yep. And it's it's incredible. got that new store smell. It does. It smells that? It smells amazing. It smells great. Um, but it doesn't just have great smells, but it also has really cool stuff that you can actually muck around. This is the test space, and here you can actually use the equipment, right? Yeah, you sit down, test out the chairs, test out the keyboards, monitors, PCs, see how they work, and see how well they play the games. Now, this is a brand new chair, right? Because I've, yep. I've yep. been One looking at chairs. this. This is a purely battleable chair, yep. uh, brand new. It's very, Pete, would you like to? I'd love to. Have a seat. Ooh. Ooh. Do you feel that lower lumbar support? Oh, this is good lumbar support. You really spin me. Spin, spin me. you? Spin me. You're good at sitting around. So, um, look, how many PCs do you guys have here on, on display? There's at least a dozen. Yeah, I mean, we've got eight that are running games, and then we've got another three that are just display models. Um, <coughs> just showing the games, or showing, showing what they've got. Absolutely. And so, these are custom builds that you guys have put together yourself. Yep. And people can come in and go, I would like that one, but I want it with this thing, and I want it with that thing, with that monitor and that keyboard. That's exactly what it's for. Awesome. Pete, what are you doing? I am uh, mucking around. I'm doing what this is actually used for, <clears throat> and that is playing a little bit of Flight Simulator. Um, and which is, this is one of the reasons that I really love this store, I really love what they've done, because I've always seen these things sitting behind a glass cabinet, but never had an opportunity to actually muck around with one. So, this is awesome. I love what you guys have done here. Probably a reason you haven't been allowed to play before. Yeah, because I don't know how to use it. Mm. Uh, bang, 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 bang. So this is the engine room of PLE Computers. Out the back, this is where you guys do all of your maintenance, working on your PCs. Is that pretty much it? Yeah, so all the builds, all the maintenance, any service work that comes in from the customer, we, we tend to bring out the back here and we'll work on it. Yep. Uh, as well as all your warranties and things like that, it's all done out the back here. So if I want a custom PC, this is literally where it will be built? Yep, yep. That guy, Josh, who ran away when we tried to talk to him before, he will build it for me? Uh, yeah, him or one of our other team members. What if I just it? want Josh to build it? Can you do that? Well, I mean, we can, but it, it, it's a very hard request sometimes oh. to get just one person to build a system. I kind of feel like we should ask Josh that question. Josh, Josh. the manager won't be building systems. Oh, <laughs> Josh has spoken. Wow, all right, Josh. Putting his foot down there. He did. <laughs>
as you can hear, things are going off in here. This place is always packed, people coming in to organize their PCs and their computer equipment, all that sort of stuff. But they're in for a show right now. This caught our eye, Anthony, and we also know that you're the one who spent countless sleepless nights building it. One of the two, I've got to give the manager here, Josh. Um, he also helped build it as well. So it's a two person job. Um, could not carry this for one person though. It's I heard that you went through a few Dremels actually building this machine. Yeah, a couple of Dremels. You gotta, at the back end of the case there, so all the cables have to route through two separate cases. Uh, so, cutting it with a Dremel, yeah, went through two small Dremels and then finally got a better one. So, can you tell us exactly what is in this particular PC? And yes, this is a PC. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got two 1080 Ti Gigabyte founder cards. Uh, you've got a Gigabyte Aurorus Gaming 7 motherboard with a i5 processor in there with, uh, I believe, is 64 gig of memory as well. Gee, Pete, does that mean anything to you? No. It means it's pretty far. All I would say is I would go, can I play Overwatch? Quite easily. Quite easily. And I'd be like, cool, I'll take one. What would something like this cost to build? Uh, this itself, I mean, parts, you're probably getting close to the, when it was built, $10,000 mark? I... And we'll have two or none? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take them all. Um, and how many litres of fluid would you reckon is pumping through this thing? I'd probably say close to two or three litres, any, anywhere yeah. in between there, really. What does, it, what does it take to maintain something like this? Um, Prez. A lot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Prez. You, you hope it doesn't break. It's round five for the season 2018 Flak Test Regional League. Pete, it's Overwatch Man, League. That's right, very excited. It's uh, our first international match as well, featuring our school from Indonesia, SMA1 PSKD, taking on Queensland's St. Peter Claver. Uh, and I'm going to be joined on the couch to cast it in just a moment by Ben Styrell Brooks. Welcome to twitch.tv slash flak test for your feature match of the week. Thanks to AOC, you absolute beauties. It's so great to have you along <laughs> to support the season. I'm Pete Frequency Corelli, joined in commentary for this Overwatch match today by Ben Styrell Brooks. Awesome to have you along. Great to be here again. Mate, uh, we've got an amazing match coming up for you for a couple of reasons. We're going to be crossing to Queensland for St. Peter Claver. They're going to be a part of this match today. And it's our first international feature match of the week featuring our first international tournament team. Man. They're from Indonesia. They're called SMA1 PSKD. Let's check them out. Hello, my name is Yuna Nata. I am a student in SMA1 PSKD. I am the captain in Overwatch SMA1 PSKD. And I'm, my role is DPS and sometimes I play time. Hi, my name is Yeni Rizal Zubiarto. I'm from SMA Sutu PSKD. I'm the main support from SMA Sutu PSKD Overwatch team. Hi, my name is Kanziga. I'm from SMA Sutu PSKD. I'm the main tank for SMA Sutu PSKD Overwatch team. Hi, my name is Tata Shalom. I'm from SMA Sutu PSKD. I'm main DPS in operating SMA Sutu PSKD. Hi, my name is Timur Jadipati and I'm from SMA Sutu PSKD. I am the support for SMA 1 PSKD Overwatch team. Hi, my name is Ian Marlewa dan Sagala. I am from SMA 1 PSKD and I am the main tank and DPS for Overwatch team in SMA 1 PSKD. This is very exciting. Uh, like, I'm pumped because like gaming and esports, as well you know, mm. it's all about inclusivity. Yeah, it's the beauty of it. Like, it doesn't matter where you are around the world, we're all connected by the one thing, that yeah. is esports, and in this very specific case, that is Overwatch. That's right. So we've got the game coming to you in just a moment. The teams are just about to wrap up, wrap up their match vetoes. Um, two fairly evenly matched teams here today. Yeah, so St. Peter Claver College is an average of around 1,900 SR, uh, while uh, S SMA1 PSKD is an average of 2,000. So they're pretty 
fairly evenly matched. So oh, hopefully very evenly matched, rather. We're so. going to see a, a fairly evenly matched match today. Um, it is a best <laughs> of three series that you're going to see. If we get to it, I'm just uh, checking out the vetoes as we speak. They've just been done. If we get to it, King's Row, which is a capture the point uh, map, will be the last one. Um, sorry. King's Row will be our second one. Li Zhang Tao, which is a capture the point map, will be our last one. King's yep. Row, the hybrid. And the first one we're kicking off with is another hybrid. It's my favorite as a Reinhardt tank main. My hometown, Eichenwall. <laughs> the team in blue to the left of your screen will be SMA1 PSKD. And the team to your right in red is going to be St. Peter Claver. Uh, Styrell, I'll hand it over to you to take us through these picks. Yep, so St. Peter Claver's College has actually changed their comp from last time, perhaps fearing uh, a stream a sniping. Stream sniping. Stream sniping. <laughs> Potentially. Actually, both teams have changed their comp, so that's interesting. A little bit of mind games, perhaps. Mm -hmm. They could have uh, picked the Farah to deal with the Bastion, potentially, so it could have been a stream snipe, but avoided. They Besides, better pick quick. They've got... Here we oh, go. We're we in. Go. Preparing their defenses. They've got one minute. Uh, we are having Sins asking to stop the game. It appears that there might be a little bit of an issue here. We fought a terrible battle here. Many Crusaders so we do have a lost pause. their lives. Perhaps Sins is having a, a glitch with his game. Quite possibly. You can't do pick a hero and we need to do a restart. In the rules, we can do a restart up to two times if teams find themselves having issues. So we will go about our business doing that and sorting that out because obviously we want a fair match between these two teams. Not just for the sake of you know, these two teams being able to play, but also so we can have a pretty good game to watch as indeed, well. Indeed. Um, look, this gives us an opportunity just quickly to come back to that story about Defran. So uh, you were saying things like um, Defran was going through some obvious issues in his yeah, life, yeah. right? Uh, you know, these are things that he did seek support for and he had a very good supportive network around him as well. But far out, um, he is impressive in terms of his followers alone. Uh, yeah, How many yeah. followers did you say on Twitch? Uh, on Twitch, he has about 230,000. Ish. 230,000 yep. followers on yep. Twitch. That in itself is a big deal for someone, I mean, that young to have to deal with. That is a very interesting thing that you have to get your head around. Yeah. Um, we're back into this game right now. Sins has picked Reinhardt. They're running a tank off tank. Uh, good DPS there. Finally seeing a Junkrat defense come into it in the two um, supports. Yeah, so PSKD. Yep, so it's a 2 2 2 for, for both teams here. Uh, uh, St. Peter Clovis College. Uh, a Mercy and a Mora, which is a little unusual as this means that they won't have a support, uh, sorry, a defensive ult. Uh, Mora's Coalescence and Mercy's Valkyrie are both uh, fairly uh, aggressive uh, ultimate abilities, uh, rather like a transcendent from a Zenyatta, which will assure your team's survival. So that means that if... Well, that depends. Because <laughs> I've had a few Zenyatas with their Transcendence and it has not assured my support. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> luckily this is an OCE matchmaking in ranks. Uh, sure. And we hope to see more coordination. Thank you. OC. So having a look at the defense of PSKD, dive tank for the defense to get around the map. Uh, they've dropped the Bastion. They have dropped Which the they had on the first time around here. Uh, it's interesting that they're running uh, the Reinhardt Diva. Usually you would see a, a Zarya paired to the Reinhardt. But this does mean that potentially we could see some Graviton Surges in from the Diva, and that would be absolutely massive. Hey, at particular times, that can be a real game saver. It can. See the Farah now. Trying to flank around the right side. Poke onto the jump down potentially. No, the left side. Reinhardt getting a fast fire strike. Mora dropping low, but she manages to get out here. Farah on the flank. Can she get the big directs here? But Diva pressuring her out. But luckily, the Mercy is giving the pocket deal, so he will be okay. But Diva dropping low. Farah really asserting the, the aerial superiority here as the team is pushing in. Red side. One player has dropped. That is the Mercy down. Defense is just absolutely crumbling here. Diva last man standing by the looks of things, but she's going to get D-Mag swung out by the right arm. Might even have to kill herself off the map. But, gonna be taken down before then. That was a swift attack. 
very swift attack. I've got to admit, I wasn't all that impressed by where they were playing their defense, SMA1 PSKD. They were very far away from the choke point. Yeah. Usually you see uh, defensive teams on this map sit nice and close to the choke point, up shields, DPS, all that sort of stuff, but uh, obviously not working in their favor. Uh, almost got the pick onto the soldier there. That would have been massive. You have the Widowmaker should be able to take out their Farah if she gets some good sidelines. An excellent pick against Farah as always. Only one shot required to take down that pesky, pesky boss that is Farah. <laughs> Farah trying to press her out the Widow. You wouldn't usually see this duel going on, but a beautiful direct will take down the Widowmaker. So now Widow's gonna, I mean, sorry, Farah's gonna have relatively free reign here. Zen Yada trying to poke her out, but that's not gonna be enough as she does have a pop with the Mercy. Tracer on the plane. Reinhardt just trying to push forward to give that heart space to push in. Diva going in. The pin almost connects with the Diva, but Diva will be okay. Zarya building up that energy, defending the cart as Tracer has to back off. And the payload will keep moving forward, but a big, almost a big pin coming out from the opposing Reinhardt here. And he just has to back off. He doesn't have the support with him, just has a mercy beam. SMA1 PSKD obviously acknowledging they had to do something a little bit different there and going with the Tracer. Reinhardt unfortunately misses his shadow right there and gets uh, counter pinned to follow up with that. And the respawns just seem to be staggered here for the defensive side of PS. PSKD. A little bit unfortunate for SMA1 PSKD at this point in time. It doesn't feel like there's a bit of com uh, communication going on between this team. You yeah. would have liked to have seen them take the Reinhardt shield down first and then drop off. I'm not sure if you saw that just then, but Lucio getting a huge frag onto the Reinhardt did boop him off the map. Reinhardt charging in, but the Coalescence is there to burst it down. Diva trying to dive into the backline to take out that jump brand, but the Mora ult still going strong. Reinhardt pushed forward. Looks like the side of St. Peter, Peter Claver College is going to have to back up and reset. That boop coming out from the Lucio was absolutely massive. It was basically a one one man one man stops an entire push by taking out the Reinhardt. Game changer. It truly, truly. Obviously was the opportunity then for there to push the St. Peter Claver team back. And this is the first time that we've actually seen a uh, a little bit of positive play come out of the SMA1 PSKD team. Dead. Coming out from PSKD, they have the Transcendence, the Pulse Bomb, and the Diva Bomb. Potentially going to be looking for a Pulse Bomb opener, but McCree does get taken down on the, on the defensive side here. Going to have to wait for that respawn. There's no res is available to come through. Oh, but the Reinhardt coming out, coming down from St. Peter Claver College. And that's going to be a key factor in them being able to uh, hold this defense. But a huge grab with the combo from the Farah. I don't think it picks anyone up as a well-timed Transcendence will save the team. It did not. That was a, a look perfectly timed, but no, it was nothing. It was negated so well. Diva trying to contest the payload here, but you don't want to be feeding Azaria a Graviton Surge, but she does have the team. The beep coming out from the Lucio, going to be massive. Allows the defensive side to push forward, stabilize the fight, and continue their hold. Only two minutes left the side of St. Peter Claver College. Still 114 metres to push this payload for this St. Peter Claver College team. And St. Peter may have to look to change up a few things here to try and get into this back line for the defence because they're just getting stopped consistently at this point. Yeah, they are. It would appear that the, the McCree must be doing something because the Farah isn't having as high an impact as she was previously. McCree on the flank does get the pick on the Junkrat. Zarya establishing domin dominance on this payload, has incredibly high energy, working her way up to that next Graviton Surge, looking to pick up the D.Va on the left side, potentially the Zenyatta as well, he will fall, the Farah getting free shots from the backline right now, as Ryan taking a lot of pressure, comes forward, swings a little bit, but <laughs> doesn't get anything, Zarya gets booped off the map, Another this Lucio is insane, great keeps move. getting the environmental kills, making sure that payload isn't moving anywhere. The defense is holding strong here. Can he get another boop? No. Reinhardt going to be pinning the D.Va. D.Va does get the kill, however. Has the pocket heals from the Mercy. A barrage coming out from the Pharah here. But it's not going to pick up any places. The Transcendence is there yet again. The Transcendences have been on point for the defensive side here. And the defense is holding strong, unfortunately. A a wasted tire as that push was well and truly over. Must agree, the transcendence has been the difference between uh, this SMA1 PSKD team 
um, negating the Farrah and not negating the Farrah. Both Indeed. times it's been there ready to go. Well, this will be the last push for St. Peter Claver College. They do have a Graviton Surge and the Farrah gets picked off. They're going to have to wait for that respawn or potentially res it. Depending on where she died, can't quite see. So the res could be too risky to go for. But the attacking side gets a huge Graviton Surge, picks up two. Will they be able to secure the kills? Diva still in mech somehow. Reinhardt swinging away on the defensive side. Zarya dropping low, has the Discord Orb on her, does fall. The more is pressured out as well. She's on one bar of HP on the cart alone. Will she be able to sustain? No, the Reinhardt big swings coming out from him. They and do that get looks overtime. To be a nice, successful hold from PSKD. An unsuccessful start on first point, but they truly brought it back through the streets phase. That is very convincing. That is the nature oh. of this game of Overwatch. It's about the ebb and flow and being able to adapt to the situations. And a, a great play there from SMA1 PSKD to be able to adapt and change their team. Indeed. To get that hold. Yep. Because I was worried there because they did seem like they were a little bit disorganized in a little bit of disarray. Yeah. Not much communication going on by the looks of things. Uh, particularly at the beginning here. But now here, we're, here they are with a great stop there before the second point. And obviously on attack now having the opportunity. Let's have a look at these two teams as they get their picks going. St. So Peter Clover College is looking to run a Reaper on the offense, but they do have the Wombo, the old Wombo combo with the Hanzo and the Zarya. Uh, that's very common in the current meta. And they have the Brig to follow up. They're not running it with uh, triple support. You'd uh, potentially see the Reaper being swapped out for another support here, but it can work as Mercy has a very strong heals, that is for sure. And if the uh, if PSKD aren't dealing enough damage, then this should be okay to run. What do you think about the Brigitte? Considering that we have the opportunity here to see what both teams are running, yep. um, I don't know the the combination from SA SMA one PSKD. I would consider that. Um, St. Peter Claver might switch off the Brigitte and change to a different support uh, maybe in the first couple of minutes. I, I'd, I'd like to see them swap off the Junkrat and pick up a Lucio. And if they were to do that, I think they would be they would be having a, a fairly good time against this uh, defensive lineup. They're running... Their tank composition is, is very strange. They're running Winston Diva Dive, but they have a Zarya to support it. I guess they really love this, uh, the Graviton Surge and Barrage combination. But we'll have to see how they play it out with the Zarya. Or maybe it's as simple as a conversation as, hey, let's triple tank. <laughs> <laughs> let's get it done. <laughs> Looks like they're going to be speeding around the right side. All tanks clumped up together. Moving forward as a unit. This is good cohesion here. Zarya are going to be picking up some nice high energy as is playing against the Junkrat. Winston jumps in, gets the bubble. Diva to follow. Reinhardt has to charge out here. Winston full HP, dealing a lot of damage onto the back line there. Mercy has fallen on the offensive side, so defense should be able to win this quite handily. What a what? Everyone on the offensive side is dropping down. At this point, it's just it's just staggering. That was one of the most incredible and quick takes of a point on Icon Wall that I've ever seen. This strategy by SMA1 PSKD is working beautifully and you can tell that they are starting to come together and work really cohesively as a unit. That four dive team peeling off to the right while the other two came through underneath the bridge and they dived them, surprised them, got in there. It was beautifully done. Yeah, I, I was incredibly confused there because I thought Blue Team was on defense. <laughs> that was my bad. I was very lost there apparently. Sorry, just building up that old charge, but does drop the critical and doesn't have the mercy with him. Farrah might be able to get the pick onto this Brigitte to, to stabilize and get the counter pick. Lucio dropping low, Winston chasing forward, but does have the pocket heals from the Mercy. But Mercy now being chased down by the Winston. Looks like Diva's going to be dropping critical as well. Mercy still dashing around, still alive. Unfortunately, the mech does drop, so that's less peeling for the Mercy. And the defensive side look to be holding here, but Farrah is getting a lot of free damage on the back line right now. Doesn't matter that he doesn't have the Mercy as if no one turns around to deal with it. We've got a bit of a change here. Sins has gone off Reinhardt. He's now on the dive tank. Ruthless picking up the D.Va as well. A huge Primal Rage to push back the enemy team. Looks to be stabilizing dominance on point. But a D.Va bomb coming in. Will it be able to pick up a few? No, the beautifully executed Winston bubble. A blade comes through. Will it be able to pick up one? Potentially, no, I don't think so. A barrage comes in, picks up the Winston. And looks like the offensive side is still going to be pulling through here. 
It's so very, off that barrage. Very evenly balanced between these two teams right now in this particular point. The two risk. versus three on the down, and the Reaper finally getting an opportunity to get into this game. But unfortunately, he goes in by himself, so that's just a, a stagger. I'm, uh, I'd like to see them like change the off the Reaper. I don't think it's working for them. I don't think they're getting close enough into the back line to be able to take out what they need to with the Reaper. And also, at 94%, this is the first time we're actually going to see Reaper get his ult for the match. Yeah, Luxuria on that Zarya does have the Graviton Surge, so this could potentially be the last fight if the grab is massive. Sims on that Winston, pops the Primal Wage, going to be smacking around the opposition. Diva chunking him down though, Sims is surely going to have to get out here. The Graviton Surge comes through, gets to the Diva Bomb to follow up. And it looks like that is a very well done, convincing fight to the side of PSKD. I do hear a Reaper on the card though, doesn't pick anyone up as a perfectly executed defense matrix. We'll counter that down, that is a team kill, and the card will be pushed to a they've, quite simple victory. They've only got seconds there, we saw oh, one come the through Winston, the door. The Winston pops the bubble on the card, does manage to make it through. The, the D.Va will be blowing him up pretty soon though, as, as Lucio falls off the map. No boobs for him, the Barrage comes through, picks up three. The Genji Blade coming through, could it be a Hero Blade? Winston drops down, he gets one, can he get more? Mercy getting the res on the Zara, no, he drops down! This could be a defense coming out from the defensive side. Genji doing absolute work right now. Winston could primal from Storm to try and get there, but I think that will be an incredible defense coming out, but it's still going on. It's still, <laughs> it's going. still going! Zarya trying to get out with that energy, will not be allowed. They're getting, like the they're getting the picks, and at this point in time, they're also going to have ult advantage on this defensive point as well. Yep, a Diva Bomb coming through, perhaps not needed, but as the Lucio does get taken down by Sims. Winston dropping, jumping in for some some reason. He does have the Primal Rage, that might have been it. Potentially being able to boot the Diva Mech off. No, she does have her shift, she does have her movement available. Winston just causing an absolute ruckus in the back line right now, but a Transcendence to make sure that monkey doesn't get anything done. Diva with a self destruct. Will he be able to get anything? A no. Another well placed Winston bu bubble will make sure that it gets nothing. The Valkyrie being popped. Another primal rage from this Winston. Are you following this? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my hardest. I, it all started with the Genji ult. That was a life saving Genji ult for this defensive team for St. Peter Claver. But right now they're getting wiped off the map, and this could be the they, uh, opportunity here now. Unless Genji gets another hero blade, but he will not. A very nice direct from the Farah. Wow. Well. That was incredible. Everybody in this room right now are looking at each other going, what did we just <laughs> witness? <laughs> that was one of the most incredible ends to a match that we have seen. Here this has got to be the defensive uh, play of the, the game. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the blade? Here it is. The hero blade to stop the offense. Hold that point. He picks up two, picks up the monkey to follow. Can he get a third? He gets the Mercy Res as well with the help of his team. Let's have a look yep. at the cards. That 12, 11,202 healing from a Zenyatta is very impressive. And of course, Sonda on that Pharah did do absolute work. Great, uh, great acknowledgement of the Sonda play there. Well done. Next match coming to you in 10 seconds right here on the weekly patch on Flaktest, twitch.tv slash Flaktest. Uh, our next map will be King's Row, another hybrid, and if that was anything to go by, we're in for another Ripper. So let's just dissect that match a little bit. Uh, initially, I thought to myself, okay, SMA1 PSKD looking a little bit shaky to start yeah. off with, and then all of a sudden, they regrouped, they started to communicate well, they started to organize themselves quite well, they adapted to the situation too, and they had an opportunity to hold that point before the hybrid, the cart, got to the second checkpoint and then flipping the map around and they're on attack. Again, with that incredibly organized play yeah. and that strategy, it looks like they've been practicing those sorts of maneuvers and all that sort of stuff, managed to completely clear the point. But I tell you what, for me, that was the play of the game that we had to see from that Genji because that was a game saver yeah, blade. I, I thought that fight was lost and then he gets a 3k with a blade and it's over. Though, to be fair, they did just come back next fight. They're like, well, you guys just blew all your odds to defend this, so we're just mm. going to take it from you with our grab. Uh, we are going to go to our next match now uh, between these two teams. SMA1 PSKD from Indonesia taking on St. Peter Claver in Queensland. As I mentioned, the next one will take place on the hybrid map, another hybrid of King's Row, one of your absolute favourites. And I've got to admit, um, 
This was the first map that I ever played this game on. Yeah, this is this is an absolute classic map, map rather. <laughs> was here from the beginning of Overwatch in the beta, and it's still here today. We'll turn this camera around and just go back to the original point just to take you through exactly what these two teams need to do. So in the top left, in blue, you're seeing SMA1, PSKD go through their picks. And in the top right, in the red, is St. Peter Claver College of Queensland going through their picks also. The camera is sitting right now on the point that the attacking team has to capture to bring out the cart to turn this into the hybrid map. Take us through the picks that you're seeing, Starrell. Well, St. Peter Claver College are certainly running an interesting comp, to say the least. They're running a solo tank Zarya. I'm hoping that they're going to get a main tank here, but if they don't, Potentially could work out. Ah, oh, now there we go. There's the swap onto the Reinhardt coming out from Sombra. It looks, like, it looks like they've learnt their lesson uh, with the dive tanks that they were trying to use that were just getting destroyed yeah, getting and wiped destroyed. off in that first map. So we've gone and seen the Shield and Zarya combo, which is a good combo. <laughs> And obviously that uh, Farah coming back into the game is going to be pocketed a fair bit with the Mercy. We've got a change here. Okay, so Zarya disappears and up comes the Widowmaker and the Hanzo. Plus they've got a May. So three times the defense on it. Okay, and <laughs> no, they're changing they're just again. It up again. They're just, they're when just you're messing ready. with your heads. When you're ready, guys, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, that was very strange to not be running a, um, a Zarya if you're going to run a Hanzo. They're PS just messing with us. PSKD, the Widowmaker on defense. I like that. Has an opportunity to get around the map here. I do too. There's a cheeky trap outside the front. McCree says, no thank you. Get out of here, you silly rat. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Reefer gets chunked down immediately on the front line. So one down the offensive side, and they are surely going to have to reset. Unless they get the res. What? Well, they do not. So Reefer's going to be coming back to spawn. Uh, fairly stock standard positioning here, holding on the point. Can back up to the corner if they take too much spam. They have the Diva, so they will be able to minimize uh, their the sh oncoming shield damage. In interesting to see SMA1 one. PSKD playing this quite far back from the choke. I don't usually see that with teams. Yeah, um, it's it's. I think it, I personally think it's better to be holding that uh, that far away from the choke because if they push into you, you have the option to just go around the corner. You know, block LOS. Uh, the Zarya on offense should be having an absolute field there right now as they are playing against the junk rat, but the Reinhardt going to be charging in. Unfortunately, misses the pin onto the opposing Reinhardt. It's going to be both Reinhardts missing their charges right now. Mercer getting pressured out by the Diva, but Reinhardt says, "Get off my healer. This is mine." <laughs> But unfortunately, the Zarya on the offensive side is going to be taken down. So that is another reset. That is two easy fights coming out from the defensive side of PSKD. Defensive uh, Reinhardt here picking up his ult. Plus, he's got the Mercy and the Junkrat not far off as well. And ult charge on the attacking team. St. Peter Claver still a fair way off. The only one picking up hers is Mercy at this point in time. Yeah, PSKD uh, could be looking to use that tire early. Just get another pick and then uh, take the fight from there. As that's what they've done to secure every other fight. They've gotten a single pick and then the fight just crumbles. They just they either walk in and, and die and stagger or they have to back off. There's really no alternative unless they manage to get a, a Mercy res. But the Diva has been controlling the Mercy quite well so far. Diva, I mean... Uh, Widow has the sidelines, looking to be flanking around the left. Is hitting the shots right now. No heads have been clicked, but a huge Earth Shatter coming out from the right hand. Picks up five. Mercy manages to get a Valk off in time, trying to heal up her team. A beat coming out from Lucio as well, so that is both support ults used. Opposing trans is also used, but the tire does pick up a kill. She can't transcend the tire. Diva going to be remaking on the point. Looks like the defense is stabilizing as Junkrat about to fall, fall down too but they did have to use both their support ults in that fight, along with the tyre, so... Incredible. As you can see, Ruthless and Warcod on St. Peter Claver, both on fire, and even though the Reinhardt managed to pick up that incredible ult, they just weren't able to make it work for it. Yeah, him. I think the Reinhardt's team wasn't ready for the ultimate, perhaps a, a lack of communication when he was going for that, but it was a beautiful Earth Shadow nonetheless, and it did force out both support ults for PSKD, and they have... Uh, the attacking side, St. Peter Claver College, does have their Valkyrie of their own. The Reinhardt gets pinned on the front line. Going to get taken down here. Beautiful charge. Here comes coming up the Rhine. Diva pressuring off the high ground. 
but a visor on the flank. Mercy going to be taken down. He drops down to the point, does have the bubble to support him. Lucio dropping one too, so there's both supports taken down for the defensive side. Reinhardt going to have to stay on this point here, but Soldier has the pocket heals. A huge diva bomb potentially coming onto the point here. Just forces. St. Peter Claver College back, but they still have the Valkyrie going. Reinhardt pushing back onto the point here. Diva dropping low, doesn't have her healer with her yet. Almost dropping out of the Matrix of the, the Diva Mech, but does have the Ryan just behind her, but gets rezzed up. Falls out of the Diva Mech. Unfortunately, the Reinhardt Shatter does miss. And looks like the defense still going strong here as they do have the respawns with them. Reinhardt missing another charge here. Can't be missing charges like that in the fight. This is close to this, but he makes up for it with a massive shatter. This man has hit two massive shatters this game, but unfortunately does get taken out. Doesn't have the heals, doesn't have the support. It looks like just the supports of the defensive side taking on to the point right now, but they don't. They're just not dealing enough damage to take care of the support lineup. It's just the Zarya on point, but the Widow is free firing. Beats is dropped on the point with the Mercy in the sky. Can't do much there. Attire just, just for good measure waiting. Going to be picking up the Ryan on the back line. No, doesn't quite pick him up. But a huge pin coming out for the Ryan. Takes down the Lucio. This fight is absolutely prolonged right now. Soldier going to have to touch, but gets taken down by the Diva. Just going to be Amora on the point right now. Doesn't have enough self-sustain to defeat four heroes by herself. Incredible. Wow. How many times, and I've got to be, how many times do you see on this map, time just about to disappear and the attacking team managed to pick up the map. This time it obviously not happening, but far out. That was one of the most insane defensive plays I have seen in this regional yeah. league so far. They were doing a great job of just uh, sustaining the members that were on point perfectly. You know, you don't, you don't, they weren't pocketing all their heels into one basket, like putting all their eggs into one basket. They were spreading it out just enough so that everyone would justify. I, I saw the Diva Mech, it would drop down to 100, you know, it would almost get Diva Mech, then he would get brought up, then the Ryan would go in, get brought up a little bit, mm -hmm. Diva would pull back, Diva would go forward, health drops, health rises, just alternating which players were on point. They had two supports on point and they couldn't get taken down because they were just pocket healing each yep. other and the focus fire wasn't there. Yep. So they To the point where, and you know what, you saw that in particular because we watched the soldier from St. Peter Claver come around, okay, and get behind them and pop out. You heard it go off. He still wasn't able to capitalize on getting him behind him. And then, as you mentioned, that moment where the Lucio and the Mercy from SMA1 PSKD were pocketing each other yeah. gave the Lucio just an enough time to get his ult, drop it, and they were able to get the rest of the team back. And you know as well as I do, it is a long way back from defensive spawn it is, it is. on this map. I was I was very surprised. Uh, the Reinhardt from St. Peter Claver College did a great job. He was hitting massive earth shutters, but there was just not enough follow-up, so he ended up dying by himself every time. i got to admit, I haven't been all too impressed by the attacking side of this St. Peter Claver College. I don't know what they have to do. Maybe they have to go away from the Reaper. This may very well work. Reaper works very well on defense here. I find on offense, Reaper, it's a little bit too hard to get in too close to them unless you're really sneaking around. Yeah. May work on offense here, on defense here, sorry. We will see. They're running it with Arissa Hog, so they will potentially be able to get some huge uh, Holt Hook combos. But it's going to be Dive beside of PSKD here. As Farah in the sky is going to have an absolute field day on King's Row as they do have an Orisa and a Junkrat. The only, do they even have any hit scan to speak of? No, so playing against an Orisa Junkrat, this is perfect. Gets a nice direct onto the enemy Junkrat. So Farah's going to pick up one. Is going absolutely ham on the back line right now with the damage boost from the Mercy. Winston pushing up. Reaper forced to use his shift. As Mercy trying to sustain the heroes on the point, but it's not going to be enough as this looks to be a nice clean take as Farah picks up three. Like I said, no hit scan, no problem is what I'd like to say for the defensive side, but Farah is absolutely going to town. Picks up five in that fight. Five! Five! Did you say five? Five. I feel like you said five. I think I said five. I'm not, not too sure. It has the barrage. GG. One push, one push makes the barrage. Best of three, SMA1 PSKD takes out this match. Let's have a look at Deera's play of the game. Just laying down the damage, hold down M1. You know, some people might say Winston main, no brain, no aim, but PSK Dira, truly showing that isn't the case. <laughs> that's really, that's really offensive to a Winston main, if I may say. Oh, gee whiz, that was an incredible match to watch. It really was. We had some amazing, uh, like.
um, defensive attacking plays between these two teams. Some really hard-fought battles in there, mm. but obviously SMA1, PSKD, just clearing point. Yeah. They've been so good throughout the entire match at that push. Once they really get themselves organized, it was just a matter of diving in. I've got to say, one thing that I think really hurt uh, St. Peter Claver College in that moment when they were on defense was the Junkrat pick, mm. right? Not so much the fact that they picked the Junkrat, but where the Junkrat was aiming. The Junkrat was going after the Farah. It was going <laughs> after everything airborne, where the Junkrat should have been getting in with the shields and just going straight down the middle of that opening that uh, SMA1 PSKD were coming through just to try and put in some splash damage. Yeah, if you know you have no hit scan to see the far, you know that you have to win the frontline game. You can't go after the far as a junk rat, like you said. It's just it's just not a viable play. So they had to all in on the front line, but didn't do it. Junko gets picked by beautiful direct from the far. I had to say, that man on the far, he pulled it out on... Um, uh, Ike and Wald. Yeah, he pulled it out on Kings Row. He just went to town. Yeah. Both times. Yeah. Pulled out the barrages, built them quickly, and he picked up... Did I say he picked up five Yeah, you kills? said he picked up five okay, kills. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, five yeah. kills. Well, check the tape, but I'm pretty sure you said five. <laughs> uh, guys, that'll do it for today's match. And congratulations, SMA1 PSKD. We also Love say congratulations, St. Peter Claver. They've been having a great season so yeah. far and a very well-fought match as well. That's what we love to see in the Flak Test 2018 Regional League. Really great battles fought. Hey, we're going to come back to you next weekend right here on twitch.tv slash Flak Test with a brand new game uh, to to be cast as well. A new couch of casters. It's going to be fantastic. Styrel, as always, it's been a pleasure, good sir. Been a pleasure to be here. Just a couple of announcements before we go. Make sure you're checking out Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube for Flak Test Gaming. Follow us. Get on board. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. Australian Western Standard Time, we will bring you our next episode of the Flak Test Weekly Patch from Peely Computers, who are one of our great sponsors for this company. It is so great to have them aboard. We go and tour the facilities, all that sort of stuff. They really are great. Peely.com.au if you want to check them out. And also, this is very important. If you are a Flak Test registered esports high school club right across the country, or as we've seen today, internationally Indeed. as well, you can get in on our Hearthstone 1v1 free-to-play community tournament. Registrations are open right now at flaktest.com. So go there, check it out. And uh, we've got a $50 Battle.net card Ooh. up for grabs for the champion and a $20 Battle.net um, uh, card up for grabs for our second placer as well. So, guys, get along there. Get amongst it. It's going to be really exciting. Uh, that kicks off in a couple of weeks, so make sure you're registered as ready. It's been great to have you along. Have a fantastic weekend. Don't forget, the other thing that is launching this weekend is Gfinity Elite Series. Get along. See some quality Australian esports happening right here in our very own backyard, and we will catch you very soon on twitch.tv slash flagtest. That does it for today's show, Pete, and big thanks to PLE Computers for letting us take over their store for the day. Yeah, it was good fun. If you want details on all of the stuff that you've seen throughout the show today, ple.com.au, they ship to pretty much anywhere in Australia as well. Hey, don't forget, for those of you that are part of the Flag Test High School Esports uh, Club, you're a registered club, we have our Hearthstone 1v1 tournament registrations going on. As we speak, there is a $50 Battle.net card up for grabs for the winner. Second place takes home 20 bucks as well. Absolutely. Play.flagtest.com if you're a club and you want to sign up. If you're not, head to flagtest.com and find out how you can sign up your team. Hey, we have a massive weekend of gaming planned next weekend for round six of the Flag Test Weekly Patch, including if you are following the Gfinity Elite Series and making your way over to Sydney, or live in Sydney and watching the show, we'll have two tickets to give away nice. to the live taping of G for the Elite at the Hoyts Cinema amazing studio that they've built and put together. It's going to be incredible. Make sure you join us then. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to check us out across all socials at flaktest.com as well. And of course on Facebook. I think that's pretty much it, Jake. That is Pete, DFTBA. <laughs> what?